Hello and welcome back. We are still in our first chapter of biology. And the last time we talked about the adaptation of the leaf to its function. And we said that today we will talk about the leaf structure. To see how is a leaf adapted to its function. So first we will do a diagram showing the structure of the leaf. Like this. Right. So this is a transverse section showing the leaf plate. So the first thing is structure of the leaf plate is this layer here, which covers the upper and the lower surface of the leaf, and this layer is called cutine. As we mentioned before, it's impermeable layer. The second thing is this layer, which is recalled here in the upper part and in the lower part, which is epidermis. And here, this epidermis, they are it has cells which are barrel shaped and they are close to each other. There are upper and lower epidermis in the leaf cells. And in the lower cell, as we mentioned in the adaptation of the leaf to its structure, we mentioned something called the stroma or the stomata, sorry. So a single one is called a stoma and the plural is tomata. So this stoma is an opening in the lower epidermis and there are in the upper epidermis but they are less in the upper epidermis than the lower ones and the two cells which are surrounding the stoma here which control the opening and the closing of the stoma are called guard cells. as they guard the stoma. Alright, so this is our first point. The second point is this area of the leaf. Without this center part, those two layers. Well, this is called the mesophyll. The mesophyll. And this mesophyll is divided into two layers. This layer was called the palisade layer. And this other layer was called the spongy 
layer. So it's obvious from this layer that its cells are elongated and although they are close to each other, they are perpendicular to the leaf surface, they are perpendicular to the upper epidermis and they have a lot of green plastids arranged in a way that allows the great exposure to the sunlight. So, because this is the first part of the plant which is exposed to the sunlight, they contain a, gr a, a group of green plastids to make use of the sunlight that this layer absorbs. The second layer is a spongy layer and of course it lies below this palisade layer. Uh, they, this uh, layer consists of a group of spongy cells. They are irregular in shape with a lot of intercellular spaces like those. And they contain less amount of chlorophyll or chloroplasts than the palisade layer. So this was our second point. The third point is this area, the center area and it's called the midrib and we also mentioned it in the adaptation of the leaf to its function as we said that the midrib branches into smaller venules and tell it covers the whole leaf and it provides a system of network which, al which allows all the parts of the leaf with food and also translocate the manufactured food to the other parts of the plant such as the stem and the roots and this midrib consists of here xylem. And the xylem acts as a transport system which transports the water and the salts to the leaves of the plant in order to carry out the photosynthesis process. And the second point is the flow. And the flow here translocates the manufactured organic food from the leaf to the other parts of the plant. So the xylem and the phloem act as the veins and the arteries, while the xylem brings the water and salts to the leaf of the plant, and the phloem translocates the organic food manufactured here at the bottom of the leaf to other parts of the plant. And also we have the xylem here supported by a type of cells called the xylem parenchyma. The xylem is enclosed by a group of cells which is called the xylem parenchyma. And here we got also a group of colenchyma cells. Here are colenchyma cells and between the xylem there are parenchyma cells. So this was the structure of the leaf blade and we saw how it's adapted to its function so that the palisade layer uh, uh, possesses a group of chlorophyll or chloroplasts that absorb the most amount of sunlight. We got the xylem that translocates the water and salts to the leaf of the plant. We got the phloem which translocates the manufactured organic food in the leaf of the plant to all the parts of it, such as the stem and the roots. And the next time we will talk about the mechanism of photosynthesis. How does the photosynthesis take place and what are the steps that the plant carry out to, perf to perform this process. Until there, I thank you for watching and see you next time.